Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's still Sunday, April 25th, and it's 10.15 a.m. And I want to share with you the prophecies that came in Dawn's letter today. There's two short ones and a long one. Okay, the first one is The Trumpet by Bill Burns. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am hovering over you, my people, to bring new hope, spiritual power, and blessings. I am giving you opportunities to go forth in spiritual power and joy. I am with you to help you accomplish all that I have set before you to do. Identify yourself with me and rise up in belief to receive all that I have for you in these days and in this time. Oh, praise the Lord for that. I de do you get that? You might have to pray about it and take it to the Lord and talk to him about it. And say, Lord, what did you mean by identifying myself with you? In other words, you let people know you're a Christian. You don't, do not be a closet Christian. Because if you're ashamed of owning up to being one, Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I am will be ashamed of you before my father. And that, you, you don't want that. It doesn't say he's going to throw you into hell, but you won't get the rewards you, did, you would otherwise deserve or have coming to you. Do we deserve any of it? I don't know. I ask myself that all the time, but I pray that I get them because that means I please the Lord. All right, let's move on to Small Straws by Marsha Burns. These are exceptional times of change and discovery that will lead to breakthrough. You will look back on these days as being pivotal. Today is not only... The first day of the rest of your life but a day of leaving the past behind. Continue on with confidence in my word and presence. Proverbs 3.26, she added, For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Hallelujah. We don't want to be caught by the enemy, caught in his snares. None of that. All right. This next one surprised me because I haven't seen anything from Genevieve Brazil in a long, long time. It's because I don't have time to search around for the people I used to listen to a lot. This is dated April 21st. 2021 word from the Lord given to me I am going to do something so great in your day that no eye has ever seen oh my baby's asleep and is laid down in, in a, curled up in a ball you know how they do in his little bed um, okay, let me start over. I'm going to do something so great in your day that no eye has ever seen. No one will believe it even if I were to even if it were told to them. There is going to be such a great move of my Holy Spirit on this earth. Before I take my people home, my people will do such great exploits. 
great miracles will be performed. Blind eyes will be opened. The deaf will hear. The lame will be healed. This is after we come back. Understand this. It says, um, it says before I take my people home. Well, that is before the church goes home. My people will do such great exploits. Great miracles will be performed. Blind eyes will be opened. The deaf will hear. The lame will be healed. The crippled will walk. It will be an instant work of my spirit, and it has already begun. Only those who do my bidding will be used. Those who willingly go out into the harvest fields will be used greatly by me to bring in my last harvest of souls. The harvest is plenty. I wonder if he said plentiful. The harvest is plenty. But the laborers are few. If you wish to be used by me in this season, my children, then you must choose to be a laborer. You must choose to tell others about me. You must choose to go out on the highways and the byways and declare my words to the lost, the broken, the hurting, the poor. Why do you fear, my children? I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. See, many of us just can't do that yet because we have a thorn in our side, as Paul put it, that the Lord chose to not re remove. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, Paul was still able to go into the highways and byways and spread the gospel. Yes, he was. But some of us, our thorn doesn't allow it. I don't know how I could do it. I mean, I, I could go a little ways that way and a little ways that way. The streets are such, the, the tree, this is such an old neighborhood. The trees' roots are causing the sidewalks to buckle and come up. And my wheelchair won't go over them. This area, Highland, the Highland residential area that's the historical district they keep these sidewalks up and down my street and down another block they keep and around this park and around that other park they keep them pristine they'll fix them because that's the historical district that they want people to come and see these Houses like this one and the ones across the street and the ones down the street. They have big signs in the front yard that give the history. And even a, across the street, I can go across the street and there's a couple of houses on that street. Hey, 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 hey. But anyway, the point is the sidewalks are messed up. I've tried. I've tried going further to pass out my little cards, you know, sticking them on cars and stuff, and gotten where I had to use the street to get home. So that's not a good idea. But anyway, that's why I believe this is after the first rapture, where it's actually we're going to be taken outside of time, given our glorified bodies, given our instructions. We'll meet the Lord, and then he'll put us back, and it won't be in 2021. We have learned it's going to be in the past 
somehow it's there's going to be the seals and the trumpets are going to go on at the same time. The seals in the past and the trumpets in the future. If it's kind of it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I'm like, okay, Lord, have your way. Do it however you want. I don't have to understand it. All we have to know is it's going to happen, and we have to be ready if we want to be part of it. All right. So choose to go out on the highways and byways and declare my words to the lost, the broken, the hurting, the poor. If you can do that now, that is wonderful. It'll be wonderful practice and you'll get people saved before they could possibly die or take the mark. Why do you fear, my children? I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Many of you fear man, and you fear persecution, and that's why so many of you don't share your faith with others. There are some that profess me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. There are some that will not confess me before men, because they are ashamed of me. Good boy, Jasper. Good boy. He stopped barking. And he sat down on my foot. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. <laughs> He's a hoot. I said in my word that if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I will also deny you before my Father who is in heaven. My children. You must choose this day whom you will serve, for I am the God that sets before you. Excuse me. Life and death. If you deny me before men, I will also deny you before my Father who is in heaven. My children, you must choose this day whom you will serve. For I am the God that sets before you life and death. And whoever walks in me will never walk in darkness. For I am the light of the world. Come to me now while there is still time. Because soon day will be turned to night, and the time will be no more. There are many who are waiting with their empty cups. They are waiting for their cups to be filled with the life-giving water that only I can give. For I am the water of life, and whoever drinks the water that I give shall never thirst again. That's got to be metaphorical for something. The living water. We hear of it in the word a lot. For out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. That's the Holy Spirit. So are people waiting to be filled with the Holy Spirit? All you have to do is ask. Ask and you shall receive. You may have to get someone who believes just like you to lay hands on you and pray for you. But you can have the Holy Spirit. That's the only thing I can think of. The living water. Okay, I'll move on. Get ready, my children. The time has come to lift you out of this world. Hallelujah! But first, my will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And every part of my word will be fulfilled in the last detail. 
before I bring you home. Rejoice, for the time of great celebration is at hand, and soon you will be with me in glory. But first you must be willing and ready to go out into the harvest fields and bring in my last harvest of souls. It is the power of my Holy Spirit working in you and through you that will perform these great tasks and exploits. You must choose to be a participator and not just a spectator that stands by the sidelines just watching on. Come to me and I will anoint you and I will baptize you in my holy fire and prepare you to go out into the power of my Holy Spirit. I will give you the words to speak. I will use you mightily and powerfully in this last great move of this final generation. Do you need more belief? Ask, and I will give it to you. Do you need more boldness? Ask, and I will give it to you. Ask, and you shall receive. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Seek, and you shall find. I declare, and I declare that it is done. I'm sorry, I decree and I declare that it is done. It is finished. My words shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish the thing that I set it out to accomplish. Rejoice, my children, rejoice, for the time is at hand. Keep looking up, for your redemption truly does draw nigh. Thank you for your faithfulness, my precious little ones. You will be rewarded for your faithfulness. I love you all with an everlasting love. Love from your Heavenly Father, Almighty God. And she gives us Haggai 2, verses 6 through 9 as a scripture, and I pulled them up in Blue Letter Bible, and I wanted to say, not all of God's messengers receive the whole message. She received part, but she did not receive that we would be taken outside of time and brought back in our glorious, uh, glorified bodies in order to accomplish the great exploits. Greater things than these shall you do, said the Lord. And that will happen, but not in this body. Okay, that doesn't mean her message is wrong. It's just not the whole picture. All right. Now, Haggai, I'm reading from the NASB. Verse 2, I mean, Haggai 2, verse 6. Let's see, she said it was uh, 6 through 9. Okay. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more in a little while, or if it is a little while. Oh, once more it is a little while. Hmm, that's the footnote, but in the text it says, Once more in a little while, I am going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea also, and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and they will come with the wealth of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. They will come with the wealth. 
That's got to be the believers who survive shaking the nations. I will shake the nations. I'm thinking earthquakes. I'm thinking literally shake, shaking the earth. And the earthquakes, they, they, we think that we're having a lot now. If you are one of those that keep up with the earthquakes, you might think we're having a lot now. But they're not that big. It's like um, he's warming us up or he's getting the ground ready. And it's going to crack wide open in places like the New Madrid Fault. Probably the San Andreas or the other one over there they said was they discovered was more important to watch than the San Andreas. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, he's going to shake all the nations and they, or the desire of all nations will come with the wealth of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. He must be speaking of the temple. So this, if it's in the future, has got to be the new temple. So there is a reason for it, because Jesus will take his place in it, in the millennium, the new millennium. He will end up being the king of kings. He is already. But I mean here on earth. He will be the king of kings and the lord of lords. All right. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. It's going to be so wonderful once the Lord takes over. Can you imagine actually having a good, well, I don't mean good in quotes, because Jesus is good. More than good, he's excellent. Almighty, powerful, and honest, and the kind of judge you want. Of course, we'll be judging too. The bride of Christ, the 144,000 that make it to the, be the bride of Christ, they will judge angels. And if I'm not mistaken, the martyrs who are risen up will also, they'll be kings and priests, I believe is what it says. Anyway, it's going to be glorious. And what more does God deserve? What does the Son of God deserve when he sits in the temple to be our king? over all the earth does he deserve a plane like they build them now no fancy stained windows and no fancy architecture and who knows what he would like but it's not going to be plain it's going to be whatever he wants and they'll use that silver and gold to make it with that's what i think that's my opinion so I'm going to end it here, and I'm going to say y'all have a blessed day. I hope that this encouraged you and just enlightened you as to things we have to look forward to. Are you going to be doing great exploits? I hope so. We're going to have on, I just believe we're going to have on awesome armor. This one lady had a dream. She had on this armor-like outfit made of something that looked like pearl. And I thought, wow, that sounds beautiful. And the lady that came up to her that was the landlady of this building was begging her, oh, come, come help, come help us. The building's about to crumble. 
we need help getting out. And she said, yes, I've come to help. And the Lord sent her to that building to get out one family that was hired to keep up the building and the property and the pool and everything. And this was near Los Angeles or Hollywood, somewhere like that. And she's, and they, she's, he's, the lady with the pearl armor and the glorified body went to help this, the workers of the building. And the lady's like, no, no, don't help them. Help, help us, help the rest of us. And she's like, I've been sent to help this family and only this family. And she got them out and the building crumbled. Why do you think that would be? I think not only were they probably selfish, rich, never gave these this family that took care of them, basically, took care of the building, kept it clean, kept the pool nice, kept the bushes great. They weren't appreciated. They loved God. The others did not. They probably already took the vax. Why should the lady who was sent by God help them? He, was, he sent her there to get that family out before the building collapsed. I think that was a very neat dream, and I believe with all my heart it came from God. And we're going to be doing things like that. The Lord is going to show us who to help. We will know who to help. We won't just have our own human minds thinking, okay, okay, I'll get you out, you know, and our love for people kicks in and we try to help them all. It's not going to be like that. We're going to know exactly who to help. Okay, well, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every one of us and our devices and all of our internet connections. And with that, I'm going to say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.